According to SpaceX, yet another 100 satellites will be burning up in our atmosphere, decommissioned, deorbiting. Would this affect your service? Let's find out. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much once again joining me for Tea Time today. We have a little bit of misty morning and focus combination. You know, I love that zing in the bergamot. I hope you're joining me with your cup of tea, maybe a cup of coffee, hanging out, talking tech, talking photo, talking video. Today is a technology day. We're going to be talking about a bunch of satellites burning up in our atmosphere. So I want to get into this a little bit because there was some people out there that were questioning, will this affect their service? What is going on? Why are we losing yet another hundred satellites? There's about 506 in totality that will be gone, let's say, as of maybe six months from now. So it's a bunch of satellites, but will it affect anything? And that's what we're going to get into today. Now, I was reading some articles. I was reading an article over on Starlink Insider, over on Benzinga, at a bunch of different places, and they talked about this. So I want to read a portion of an article from Benzinga. I want to give you my commentary, give you my thoughts on it. And then as I always say, down below, I want to hear from you. Your thoughts are more important than mine. Anyways, as I always say, if you enjoy this content, throw it a thumbs up. That'll be very helpful. Don't forget to subscribe. If you're not, if you are, thank you so very much. Click this little button over here. So when I go live, when a new video comes out, you'll be notified of it immediately. And you want to say thank you for all of my hard work. This little thank you button, click on that. Give a dollar or two. That'd be fantastic. If not, that's perfectly fine. Consider becoming a member of the channel. That would be even better. And if you're looking for more Starlink content, Click over here when you're done watching this video. I put together, I think it's about 240 plus videos just on Starlink. All helpful how-tos, tips, tricks, what to do, what not to do, what to buy, what not to buy, and why. This channel is always about the why, guys. Always about the why. Also, if you haven't downloaded any of my eBooks, consider checking them out. They're free. Go to jchristina.com forward slash books. Now that all the housekeeping is out of the way, Let's jump right into this article. And then once again, I'll give you my commentary. So this one, once again, is from Benzinga. We want to give them full credit. Elon Musk's rocket manufacturer company, SpaceX, announced on Monday its decision to initiate a controlled descent of approximately 100 Starlink satellites, citing an issue that could potentially lead to future failures. According to a statement released by the company, while the current batch of satellites is operational, a discovered issue raised concerns about their future reliability. As a precautionary measure, SpaceX intends to execute a gradual controlled descent of around 100 of these satellites in the up and coming weeks and months. The deorbiting process will take approximately six months for most of the affected satellites. SpaceX disclosed that it has already conducted controlled deorbits for 406 satellites out of the nearly 6,000 Starlink satellites launched into low Earth orbit. Presently, 17 satellites are non-maneuverable, while 95% have completed their deorbiting process. Basically, 17, they cannot deorbit themselves. That's okay, because remember, all satellites are sitting at about 550 kilometers. They will deorbit all by themselves just due to the Earth's gravitational pull as well as the atmospheric drag upon them. So within five years, they're going to deorbit anyways because their propulsion system will finally give out. They won't have any more fuel and then they're going to deorbit. That's just simply the way it is. But the ones that are non-maneuverable or they're having problems with or they speculate that they will have problems with them due to sensors on board, they deorbit them before they end up being a non-maneuverable satellite where they no longer have control over it, which makes sense. It's smart. Smart, right? The article continues, the 17 passively decaying satellites are being carefully monitored to minimize potential collision with other satellites. Now, they're not going to be colliding with any satellites. Once again, they're at 550 kilometers. They're slowing down and they're going to work their way back into orbit and they're going to burn up into nothingness. Not really a potential collision possibility, but 
rags always make drama. That's what they do. Despite the reduction in the number of satellites in orbit, SpaceX reassures that the operational efficiency of SpaceX Starlink system will remain unaffected. That is very important. The company highlighted its manufacturing capacity of 55 Starlink satellites per week and the capability to launch over 200 satellites per month to offset any potential disruption. SpaceX executed seven Starlink missions in January alone, deploying more than 150 satellites into space. Quote, while this proactive approach comes with the cost of losing satellites that are servicing users effectively, we believe it is the right thing to do to keep space safe and sustainable. They continue by saying it encourages all satellite owners and operators to safely deorbit satellites before they become non-maneuverable in the interest of space safety and sustainability, which makes sense, right? But like I said, remember, these satellites are sitting at 550 kilometers in comparison to Viasat or HughesNet, where those satellites are at 36,000 kilometers. So think about 550 compared to 36,000, six, seven times, seven and a half times greater distance from the planet, meaning that the amount of drag on those satellites is minimal, absolutely minimal. So the amount of propulsion necessary to keep them where they are is next to nothing, quote unquote. So coming full circle, Will this deorbiting of the next 100 satellites really make any much of a difference? And the answer to that is no. The reason being is those are going to be version 1.0 satellites that will be deorbiting. Now, those satellites are set to be decommissioned anyway, so they're decommissioning them earlier, and that probably makes sense. Before they run out of fuel and no longer have maneuverability, well, take them out a little bit earlier. This way, we know that they get out and they're not like the 17 that are sitting there stuck, just revolving around the planet, waiting to deorbit by themselves. Once again, they will deorbit by themselves. That's just the way it works. They are not going to be some type of menacing object out there that is a risk of collision because there's 17 of them, number one. And number two, they are working their way back into the atmosphere and everyone knows where they are. That's the one thing with SpaceX. SpaceX shares the locations of all of these satellites all the time. They're constantly sharing how many are up there, everything. They disclose everything. And that is really nice to see, almost like an open source type of system, instead of something that's so tight-lipped and you don't know what's going on. So that's really good. Now, obviously, there's probably some things that we don't know about, especially if there's going to be payloads for the military or something like this. They're not gonna tell you about those, and I'm glad that they don't. But everything else is fully disclosed, which I think is great. The other thing is, is remember, not only is this not going to affect us because they are version ones, but they are going to be replaced with version two minis. Version two minis are the equivalent to four of the older models, even the version 1.5s. That's number one. Number two, the version ones, they do not even have lasers on board, communication lasers, where the version 1.5s and the version 2.0 minis do. So the 1.5s and the 2.0s, they form like a mesh network, just like what you would have at your house. That mesh network allows them to communicate with one another. So they can actually send data from, let's say, the United States all the way across the planet and do it literally within a few milliseconds instead of having to go up and down from ground station back up to satellite, ground station. Back. They don't need to do that. They can literally bounce the data from satellite to satellite to satellite to satellite all the way around the planet at the speed of light in a vacuum. Let's just say extremely quickly. Whereas the version 1.0s couldn't do that. So they're not even part of the mesh network anymore. They're kind of just there, right? they're eventually gonna all, once again, deorbit and disintegrate as they approach Earth. When they go into the atmosphere, they will just simply burn up. And these satellites are made to do that. They're made to self-destruct, basically. They're made out of materials so that once they do enter the atmosphere, they will literally disintegrate. This is something that is a pre-thought 
when they're built. So that is really good also. And I like what they're saying that if we do this and we provide, let's say this space safety, the sustainability of space, maybe other owners and operators of satellite, satellite programs, satellite companies will do the same because there is no rules, so to speak, right? Especially not international, which maybe eventually there will, we'll see. Anyways, guys, so this is not bad news. It is good news. If anything, our service is going to get better, not worse. And maybe if you're outside and a couple of these satellites do come into the Earth's atmosphere around your location, you might see a shooting star. That's not a shooting star. That's actually a SpaceX Starlink satellite. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this. If you have, like I said before, throw the video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, family, colleagues, share it with your community, share it with Reddit, Facebook, wherever you hang out. We really appreciate it. Let's grow this channel. Anyways, guys, head over to my website, jchristina.com, where you can find all the photography tools I've made for you and me over the very many years. Check out my merchandise, my teas, and everything else. I would really appreciate it. Pick something up if you would like. That'd be awesome. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay connected, and we'll see you in the next one. Love you all.